God, may we hear uh, afresh and anew from you today. Uh, Lord, you are the, the maker of all things, and you love us, and you love forgiving us, and we thank you, God, for that. And uh, Lord, we realize we'll, uh, we will progress not by making every right decision, as if we're going towards perfection, no, but responding appropriately uh, to the wrong ones that we've made. And that's the aspect of repentance. So thank you, God, for your forgiveness, especially as we look back at 2022 and just how many times, just in one year, uh, that we needed to come to you and repent and you have forgiven. You love to forgive. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We really look forward to what you're going to do, not only in our individual lives, but in our, our community here at Calvary Marietta and how you're going to use us to touch our, our world. And so, Lord, we, uh, we thank you uh, for this last year and we look forward to this next year and uh, just in anticipation, in Jesus' name, amen. Here's what I thought we would do uh, uh, this morning. Uh, we've broken out of uh, Luke for a couple of weeks. We'll get back to it uh, next Sunday. Uh, but uh, basically, we're going to be looking at this recap. Uh, so end of the year recap. Uh, but what I'm doing is kind of sandwiching it with talking about and challenging us with this new year. And then we'll do the recap. And then end again with the challenge of the end with uh, uh, the new year and then wrap it up with uh, communion uh, this morning, starting off our, our year with uh, communion uh, together. And so what I want you to start off by doing is just simply staring at that empty calendar there of looking out at 223 and uh, in 2023 and, and really looking at that and, and looking at this fresh year that's coming our way and what, what, what emotions come, what, what comes to your mind? What, what are you thinking? When you think of a whole next year, this whole next year and what's up, it could be fear, it could be some type of weight, it could be guilt for the last year of uh, maybe things that you wish you would have done and didn't do. Maybe it's excitement. Maybe you're excited to, to bust out of 2022 and, and ready for this, uh, this new one. But basically, as we look at this calendar, though, these are all unlived days. And you think, Brian, that's really profound this morning. Well, thank you. But these are all unlived days. They are brand new. It's a blank sheet of paper ready for us, and, and uh, it's going to be beautiful. Uh, Ellen Goodman, she was an American journalist and syndicated columnist. She said this, we spend January 1 walking through our lives room by room, drawing up a list of work to be done, cracks to be patched. She said, maybe this year. To balance the list, we ought to walk through the rooms of our lives, not looking for flaws, but for potential. And that's the little guy with the cape there. Uh, maybe we ask, would it be possible for me to make a difference in someone's life this year? Just start right there. Because that's going to be success, pouring into someone's life. We've learned now by, uh, by now that cliches don't rescue us. Things like new year, new you. Woo, what does that even mean? I don't know. G.K. Chesterton said, the object of a new year is not that we should have a new year, it's that we should have a new soul. And so again, looking inward and seeing what God wants to do with each and every uh, one of us. Do you want to change in 2023? See, we already know how to change. As believers, Paul let us know in Romans chapter 12, in fact, how to do that. And so you see the, the scripture below it there. I, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, and then he gives this list to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. But a lot of times what happens is we've had this as maybe a memory verse. We've read it a number of times through. But what the heck does it mean? If we slow down just for a second, we realize it's all the parts of us that God has given us that get engaged here in, in change. And so to present your bodies, to present, that's, that's a will. That's your choice. He's, he's calling us to do something. He's given us the ability then to obviously be able to do it. And so there's this presentation, presenting God with, in fact, our body. So it's our will gets engaged. It's a, cho it's a choice. And then our body is engaged there as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Now our spirit's engaged here because that becomes our spiritual worship unto the Lord. Then it gives us the negative, don't be conformed to, the, to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Will, body, spirit, mind. It starts connecting all of these things. So when we want to make changes in our lives, there's this practically to, to renew our minds, we know. We must do things a different way for a long time until, until those neural pathways, right, in our mind that were causing us to do things that we no longer want to do are changed. Just like that physical pathway in the picture behind me there on the ground, if you keep going over the same route, it becomes a habit. And that route becomes a rut, right? A baby smiles. And you reward that smile with smiling back, maybe even cuddling. A toddler touches something sharp and realizes that hurts. Both of these are valuable learning experiences. Neural pathways are essential. However, not all of them are beneficial and can even become negative habits. And so whether it's an addiction to pornography or an addiction to a substance or an addiction to food or an addiction to gossip or worse, an addiction to judging people that have problems with pornography, pornography or substance abuse or food abuse or gossip abuse. If you're sitting there, Pastor Brian, I really don't struggle with these sins anymore, any of the ones that you mentioned here. Uh, this, this year has been pretty good. I, I got a pretty clean slate. I've been walking with the Lord a long time now. I don't have any of these struggles except the struggles of self-righteousness that I'm expressing by expressing that I don't need anything new from God this year, right? So if you're looking to for change in 2023, we need this mind transformation. Like choosing a different path to walk down. God designs our brains to be able to change and adapt in that neuroplasticity so we can change those old habits. And the good news, the brain can create new routes and shut, shut off old ones. And it's interesting as, as Paul is kind of laying that out and he, he talks about the mind and our, our thinking or as Dan calls it in his class, stinking thinking. And, and we, we get that at the Philippians 4 and verse you know, 6 through 8 there of, of changing what we're thinking about. And so he's talking about not only mind transformation, but we also realize as believers, it's, it's this, also this spiritual power and, and spiritual inspiration that we need also. This fresh filling of the Spirit. Learning how to listen to what the Spirit is telling us. See, we have someone living inside of us that helps us with all of this, helps us to be able to identify when attacks come our way, how to battle those things. And so this 2023, as we step into this new year, listen to what the Spirit is saying. Don't return that text on your phone. Maybe that's what the, the, what, what the Spirit is saying. Don't, don't go there. Don't comment on that post. You don't need to. Back off. Ask the Spirit of God what areas to avoid this year. There are some places that you cannot afford to go this year. Your soul can't afford to go this year. Your joy can't afford to go to this year. This, your peace can't afford it. Ask for God to do something new in your life this year. Save your strength for the things that matter. Listen to the Spirit of God. All right, I'm going to back up and do a recap. There we go. And so I want to take some time this, uh, this morning and really look back. If you tithe here at the church, you should want to know what your finances are going towards. What's got accomplished in this last year? Again, I started with about 19 pages of things. I had asked our, our ministry leaders, hey, fire me some uh, just kind of bullet point highlights. My staff doesn't know how to do bullet point no, it was 20 pages that I've been sifting through and, and trying to get down to where we can do it in a sermon here. Uh, but I did my best to kind of crunch down to where we could uh, uh, get down some, uh, what's, what's happened around here? And then we'll get back down to some, uh, um, some last kind of points that I want to make. We just opened our learning center. You might not have even seen it yet because it literally just opened this last week. And so we're uh, pretty excited about that. And that's basically taking two rooms, making one big room, but it really turned out nice. And then there'll be breakout rooms around that. We're almost done with our multi-purpose room and that's where all the kids meet, kind of same thing. We took uh, two classrooms and made it into one. That's where they'll all meet in the morning in that way. And uh, uh, they're pretty excited about that. We remained incredibly financially stable as a result. We're able to put more resources and missions into ministry and into proper, properly taking care of paying our staff. 
We have a zero debt at both the church and the school. And even before our property closed, we had a very healthy reserve uh, in between the both of them. And we, uh, as we mentioned a couple weeks back, we were able to close on our property that we had been dealing with for about 16 years, so we're pretty excited about that. We also encouraged uh, uh, something as a staff in this last year, encouraged goal setting with ministry leaders, and it's been neat to see the, the fruit through the year and the different ministries in that. Our local generosity from our month of giving just right back in November, uh, you brought uh, a few truckloads of specific items for our homeless in Temecula, uh, the Project uh, Touch that's over there. Uh, you bought out all of Tiffany and, Jimmy, uh, J- Tiffany and Jimmy's tacos one Sunday, and so you guys did incredible by eating up all those tacos, but that donated $2,000 to the California Family Life Center. You also brought about 500 gifts for foster kids in Riverside County here, uh, again, via uh, California Family Life Center. Uh, People gave online to that also. Uh, Ladies collected carloads of diapers and other various baby items for Elsinore Valley uh, Pregnancy Center. Uh, Also came up with 20 gifts were given for women in the Rebirth Homes program. Uh, Somebody donated, we had about $3,000 donated to Rebirth Homes. 30 of you showed up for California Family Life Center's wrapping party to help over a thousand gifts, (laughs) thousands of gifts actually. In the women's ministry, Kelly said it's been a growing year, and she summed it up with one word, new. New, lo- new ladies stepping up to lead and serve, new ways of doing things, new studies, new people, new servants, new ideas. We're trying to meet new needs. They had about 300 ladies registered for the last Bible study. Uh, it said their Christmas celebration was outstanding. I got to see part of that, and it really was. And uh, amazing retreat this last year, although there's last one up at Twin Peaks. Now they'll be uh, shifting to another place. Uh, she, uh, her and uh, Charlotte also started this last year. It just hit the one-year mark, the foster and adopt uh, support group that they started. And Kelly said the biggest blessing had been two people have told me, I don't know what I do without this group, knowing you guys support us is such a comfort and brings me such peace. And she says that's actually what her and Charlotte had prayed specifically for that, that it'd really be a neat, close community, and it's become that. They meet once a month, and so it just hit the one-year mark, as I said. Our justice meetings, uh, we call it at risk, uh, our, our monthly meeting for that, uh, supported and offered so many different things. The, the list was really long, and I just kind of put it down to about a paragraph. Things that uh, dealt with awareness, advocacy, and action. Uh, there was some education elements to that, celebration, support for individuals and ministries. There was a lot of prayer meetings, uh, fair trade classes, and we also sold different things at church that were fair trade. Started a small group study, uh, made 10 Christmas gifts for survivors, made nine baskets at Thanksgiving for survivors. Again, they had collected over $6,000 for the Elsinore Valley Pregnancy Center uh, through our baby bottle drive that we did. Uh, The community pantry is uh, something where we continue to help on a monthly basis. Uh, One of the months we did hundreds of eggs and cartons. Now the times we did another, one of the months we did 165 backpacks for back to school and almost monthly donation drives to uh, uh, the pantry. Thinking on the mission front, uh, Lori, uh, excuse me, Larry had uh, put down a, a few things. Mike and Lori had the opportunity to get back out on the field and are serving uh, uh, with several partners that are ministering to our H people, one of our unreached people groups. Ryan and Julie have been on the field for a year now. Both are involved in the row Bible translation. A big thank you for your generosity to the church helping out Mercy Projects that were helping out those in the Ukraine and also uh, doing that sustainable dairy farm over in Armenia. And you guys helped out. And again, uh, any time that you helped out with uh, Mercy Projects throughout the year, it went towards that. We are able to add to missions. We did something different. With our finances, we, uh, we took the different ministries, uh, not, not every one of them, but uh, the large, some of the larger ministries, and basically made a uh, ministry line item for specifically missions. So not only that our missions, or, you know, that, that, that Larry oversees is taking care of missions, but wanting to each of the different ministries is where does your ministry fit in place to touching our world, and what might that look like, and so making that part of their budget, so they're thinking along that line also. 
We also formed a corporation over in Nepal to be able to purchase property for the Rohingya living in the settlements there. And again, uh, throughout the year, you guys uh, really helped out in feeding them at different times. Uh, uh, we ended up paying this year's rent before we can get the property. Uh, just recently, we did some warm clothes for the winter season that just hit. And uh, that's all because of you, and we thank you for your generosity in that. Uh, Calvary uh, Murrieta Christian School Talked a little bit about the school. Uh, they've uh, uh, grew in enrollment 15% overall, 57% in our junior high. Our admin team welcomed Christy Hartman uh, this year as K through 8th principal. And Janelle Williams, she's been a teacher with us for years, uh, but she's the assistant principal now. And listen to these statistics. The spring of last year, 84% of our students tested at or above grade level in math, 82% at or above grade level in reading. It's a huge accomplishment compared to the state scores of 33% proficient in math and 47% proficient in reading. So uh, just doing w really well and, and just proud of our kids and of course our, our teachers there. Uh, this year we were able to remodel all of our classrooms down, down below at our, at our church or at our school campus, uh, remodeled our science and technolo technology labs, created a junior high lounge and are presently turfing our fields. I don't know if you could see it when you're driving up Monroe there, uh, but they took out the whole entire field and uh, it was supposed to be turfed, but hit a little bit of rain. So, but that should be uh, finished uh, very soon. The school is financially secure, financially independent from the church and financially stable. And we rejoice over that, and we rejoice over this. 16 middle school students were uh, baptized at the last uh, camp they had gone to, so that's pretty awesome. Calvary Kids, which is overseen by Jasmine, uh, they did a great winter camp and a summer camp, and uh, first time holding a kid's baptism class, and so they uh, really promoted it as we do in here, saying, hey, our next baptism's coming. They put on a class, over 20 kids got uh, baptized at our last uh, spring baptism. Uh, tons of, uh, they had tons of summer activities, of course, uh, VBS. Uh, they did their first trauma training for the first time, and it's really how to identify in dealing with trauma and building relationships with kids that have gone through something traumatic. Also, they, uh, of course, helped put on the Harvest Festival and uh, appreciate all the volunteer, appreciate uh, their volunteers. And so they did appreciation dinner, uh, Christmas brunch, Christmas play they just put on, and Jasmine was saying, that really looking forward to their NPR room, the multi-purpose room that they're doing there, and are really going to uh, kind of redesign Sunday morning to be almost more VBS style of everybody meeting together, doing more together, and then breaking out into uh, discussions and relationship buildings in the second part of that. And so that's going to be reworked uh, here very shortly. Middle school with Shane, who oversees what we call our 6, 7, 8, which is the grade 6, 7, and 8. Uh, he had talked about 10 to 12 student leaders serving consistently throughout the entire year. Uh, they do everything helping with the, uh, working the slides on the computer, doing sound for worship, doing announcements. Uh, throughout the year, they have beach days, Tuesday hoop day in our gym, uh, game nights, boys and girls Bible studies, winter and summer camps, summer kickoff. They also tried something new for the first year, and this kind of came back to those uh, um, uh, goal setting at the beginning of the year. He did Gospel U, uh, Gospel University. And uh, we're still, as a staff, hearing uh, so many great compliments about uh, them when they had done that. It was 23 students. They attended a two-day class, understanding the gospel, why it's important in their life, how to know and live, it out, uh, live out their faith. And so uh, doing a great job there. High school with uh, Cam, with Rice Eyes. See him over there. Hey, Cam. Uh, they had Exalt Summer Discipleship Group program. Same thing for you, right? That, that it was a goal setting thing. And uh, I, I remember it because it was really funny. Because uh, we were sitting with Jen and, and, and Cam says, yeah, I, got, I have kind of this vision, kind of dream, but I'll probably do it out in two and three years. And so he starts explaining it. And she says, I'll meet with you later. You'll be doing it this year. <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious. It was awesome. And you did a great job. And it was a great turnout and, and neat time. First time, so we went six weeks, four different homes of people within the church. So thank you for those that opened up up your homes to that, 15, 18 students each week, and so with that, uh, great uh, Exalt Summer Discipleship program, and uh, maybe doing it again, uh, yeah, all right. These past two years, have, they've gotten involved in student venture Christian clubs on both uh, Marietta Mesa High School down the street and Marietta Valley High School. Saw the Lord move and create beautiful relationships, not only with the students, but also the faculty and our local youth pastors in the valley. 
Now with Calvary Kids and the middle school and the high school, they all provided, and so we didn't even bring it to the adults, we just brought it to those three groups. They provided 400 jackets for the H, again, our H people group, one of our unreached people groups, uh, their children's winter. And so not only paid, were able to, uh, so much came in, they were able to do all 400 jackets, but also were able to do uh, blankets and some money to be able to help them also. So neat is again, we, we want all of our church Every level, every age, everyone being able to uh, be a part of, uh, of missions and touching our, our world. Mom's on a mission, different kind of mission, but an important mission. Uh, Jessica Cernatic uh, oversees that. She has six mom leadership team in place. And uh, they do a number of things when moms have a baby, you set up the meal train for them and help each other out. And, and uh, uh, Jessica said, so thankful for the people that stepped in, the volunteers that help out with that, with childcare. And at not one of the times this year so far, none of the moms had to leave the meetings to, to go and help. And so thank you for those that step in, help the young moms to be able to get ministered to uh, at why they're there. Also an answered prayer request from October. They said they were praying for one of the mom's pregnancies because she had shared that not only she had previous miscarriages, but her ultrasound showed serious complications. They said, praise God, two months later, she and her baby still in the womb are perfectly healthy. All tests have come back normal, so they were rejoicing in that. Uh, Pastor Tony, take a breath. <sighs> okay, you guys are out. You guys are doing awesome. Pastor Tony started uh, starting point classes. Uh, we provide that uh, for opportunity for new and uh, newer people to the church to have a chance to connect with others and for them to hear uh, who we are as a church. Uh, he helps in overseeing the baptisms. We celebrated over 50 kids and adults who were baptized at our last baptism, uh, last two baptisms. Uh, they started uh, something new. He started something new, Easter barbecue. We had a great turnout for our first annual Easter church barbecue and scavenger hunt. Talk about uh, uh, Andrew Paulson, he, he uh, oversees the community groups. In both the spring and the fall, uh, both sessions had about 70 people sign up for that. So that's small groups and uh, uh, five different community groups get together. One group started a, a Bible reading accountability group chat. One started a hiking club. Another group was thrilled to see an answer to prayer as Frank Melinda's eyesight was restored. And then I really like this. this is pretty, I mean, that one's pretty awesome, but I thought this was funny. Thursday afternoon group was interrupted by a solar panel salesman one day. They told him it wasn't a good time, but he was more than welcome to stay for a Bible study and prayer. He decided to jump in and said he enjoyed it. It was the first time in a long time he had done something like that. So there's what you can do when solar panel salesmen come to your door, just invite them on in and do a Bible study with them. We did Operation Unity. It was the first time we've ever, do, we've ever done that. We did it for the, the four uh, weeks of September. If you remember, we had 20 groups with almost 300 people attending for that four-week series on authentic love. People appreciated the hosts who were very hospitable, warm, gracious, friendly, and welcoming. People really enjoyed getting to know others and having fellowship and being part of a small group. And many shared they really liked the multi-generational uh, aspect to that of meeting together with all different age groups. We learned from each other from no matter what age. It was just a, a beautiful thing. Grief Share is run by uh, Pastor Des and Jan Starr. They had uh, 38 people come first session, 50 people last session. And if you don't know this, we have a lot of people from our community because it's a nationwide organization. So we have a lot of people that aren't connected to our church in any way that find a family, that find a place to be able to meet and get ministered to. I'm gonna give three quotes. The first one, I just want you to feel the pain. You sometimes feel after an experience like this that you're Talking a foreign language, says a mother whose daughter had just died. You feel like there's no way anybody can know what you're feeling. There's absolutely no way anyone can know the depth of your pain, so you feel like it's futile to talk about it because words can't express the pain. But here's an individual who came in the midst of thinking that to where no one will understand but came anyways. Another quote said, I realized that life would go on even when I initially thought I, I couldn't live without my loved one. I realized I can't live without Jesus leading me through my grief. And then the third one, I realized the leaders demonstrated a love and concern for me that truly care about me and everyone in our group. 
which reminded me, and I wanted to, uh, we had to say goodbye to a, a number of people. Uh, for some reason, especially through spring and summer, we had a lot of deaths within our church. And I know I'm not going to hit every single one, so I apologize if I miss some. Uh, but I had just kind of sent it out to our pastors saying, and we kind of came up with this list. Zach Zarate, John Hughes, Gail Yoder, John Irving, Ruben Heredia, uh, Kenny McGuire, John Medeiros, Johnny Pyburn, uh, Rosie, uh, which always sat in the back in the foyer, that's Linda Rivers' mom, uh, Florine Kelly, that's Zandra Carvalot's mom, Cindy Beerus lost her husband, Donald, married 64 years. I got to meet her. Nicole Pedlow lost her mom, Sherry, this year. Again, I know there's so many more than that, uh, but uh, we just wanted to remember them. Our young adults ministry, they call yams. Uh, Jason oversees that. Uh, they said that they've uh, doubled in size this year, got to witness two baptism, multiple young adult, adults coming to saving faith. Uh, we do the, they, they do this on, uh, late on uh, Saturday nights. Many of our leaders started to disciple other young adults, started up Bible studies, even going out and evangelizing in our city. A few other of our young adults have volunteered their time for community service with our benevolence department, have helped with food deliveries and uh, moving those in need. We had another marriage this year with Alyssa and Andrew. Our leadership team is stronger than ever, working tirelessly. They give so much of their time and energy in this ministry and all on Saturday night. They could be anywhere else in the world. They prefer to be here at church investing in God's kingdom. That's pretty cool. Our Calvary classes is overseen by Pastor Andrew Lacasse. We, uh, he said we implemented a class this year uh, for uh, newer believers called Fresh Faith. Uh, favorite quote from a student was, I've been a Christian my whole life and I had never heard this stuff. <laughs> like, it sounds like Andrew quoting somebody. Doing that. Our foundation's students led a gospel bracelet booth at the Harvest Festival where they practiced explaining the gospel to kids and their parents and praying for the families. Uh, we had some of the school staff take classes to be better prepared to teach the Bible uh, to our uh, school students. Uh, regarding our men's ministry, uh, Greg Fisher had shared Tuesday morning weekly uh, men's prayer uh, that's done over here every Tuesday morning in our agape room. And uh, you're welcome, uh, men, to come join that. Uh, they had four breakfasts this year. I know we got one coming up here in January, but they did four last year. Average attendance between 70 and 80. They did a spring Tuesday night series, and they did their fall Tuesday night series. And they did, did the, I'm not sure if this is the first time, could have been the second time, but the summer grill and chill. And it was about 200 to 250 guys we had out in the courtyard. It was really uh, uh, well attended. And also, uh, Ernie Lizarraga has been faithful on Saturday morning for a dozen plus years. Uh, but they meet Saturday morning men's Bible study and been going through the, uh, the, the Psalms. Uh, many different stories of relationships that have been forged. Men rallying around other men to help them out or helping out their families left behind as was the case with our friend John Medeiros when he went home to be with the Lord. All right. Well, that's our synopsis for this year. There were so many more, but, you know, trying to kind of package it into the time. Uh, I need to do that. And I'm not doing too well. So let me wrap up with uh, this uh, third session here. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. That only is important, which is eternal. This is in uh, Florence, Italy, the Florence Cathedral, or called the Duomo, uh, which means cathedral in, in Italian. But they have this triple door entrance there, and there's a, a phrase that had always caught my attention over the three doorways with these arches and art artistically uh, carved with thought-provoking uh, uh, inscriptions there. Over one door, it's this wreath of roses etched in stone with a legend, all that which pleases is but for a moment. On the very other side, another one sculptured a, a cross and accompanied with the words, all that which troubles is but for a moment. And over the largest doorway there in the center is that only is important, which is et uh, eternal. So that first one, all that which pleases is but for a moment. Hey, there's a lot of great pleasures in this life, but they're fleeting. It's not a pleasure that stays with you. They don't last. Now on the other side, uh, all that which troubles is but for a moment, but that doesn't last either, and that's a good thing. Like Jesus' cross, your troubles won't last either. But then that center doorway, that only is important which is eternal. That's what lasts. Obviously, it's a duh, but, but that's what lasts right there. And so what's going to last? 
that we take from this planet and we take into this next world, what is going to last? What do you get to take with you? And a lot of times we always say you can't take anything with you. No, there is. There is a list. There are things that we can take with us, and we do. We take our relationships with us, i.e. our relationship with God and our relationship with other believers. We took that with us. We take our integrity with us. We take our character with us. We take our experiences with us. And we take our rewards with us. Maybe not. We actually send those ahead, but you know what I mean. Solomon had said in Ecclesiastes 7, Better is the end of a thing than its beginning. Begin picking up your cross. We end picking up our crown. We begin walking through the mire of life, but we end walking on streets of gold. We begin as like caterpillars, which are pretty ugly and limited to crawling, but we end as gorgeous butterflies fluttering. The end of a thing is better than its beginning. And as we move into 2023, 2023? <laughs> Sounds like twee, but uh, uh. as we move into 2023, there will be passing pleasures and bruising sorrows. The spiritually wise will realize that these must be woven together with what's beyond 2023, eternity. So we're thinking about 2023, but let's also have in mind the future, have in mind our eternity. The year ahead is untried. It is beckoning a tomorrow filled with new experiences and possibilities and risks to take and relationships to build. And the wise in heart will enter 2023 with faith and hope and scriptural optimism. So determined to take advantage of every God-given opportunity. Resolve to not see church as an institution, but a family. Decide to get something out of your devotions and not just do them. Choose an intimate walk with Jesus. It's comforting to know that God, the God who guides us, sees tomorrow more clearly than we see yesterday. Let me say that again. It's comforting to know that the God who guides us sees tomorrow more clearly than we see yesterday. Well, at this time, I'm going to invite up our worship team and we'll step into our communion time. And time and time again, what we heard from the Gospels and we heard even uh, in uh, the book of Corinthians when Paul's writing that is simply do this in remembrance of me. And so as we start off our new year doing this in the remembrance of, of Christ. We have things that remind us Matter of fact, advertisers will give us refrigerator magnets so you, every time you go to the fridge, if you're like me, it's a lot, and you see their magnet and you're reminded about their business or whatever they're advertising or selling or whatever else. And so we have these reminders in our life. If you still use post-it notes, I still like those, I have them on my desk, post-it notes uh, or notes on your phone, that when I you have almost 300 notes on my phone that I have stored up there. Those rubber bracelets, they'd pass out to be able to remember someone or something on that. Today, we set reminders. Hey, Siri, remind me, 10 a.m. tomorrow, do this, right? We set reminders. And, oh, my Siri just went off. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> it really did. Oops. <laughs> and so we... I'll tell you a funny story. So we got an Alexa at home, first time, right? And uh, so Kelly calls me. At, don't tell her I told you this. She calls me at work and she says, I can't get the TV thing to turn on because we got it connected in, right? And uh, I said, well, let, let, go ahead and give it to the command. She says, Siri, turn on such and such. And it's like, her name's Alexa. It's like, she just hung up on me. It was so funny. <laughs> but this, mor this morning, we set a reminder, day one of our new year, that it is, in fact, we're going to remember this. We're going to remember our communion time. And during this first song, what I'm going to invite you to do is come up to the tables or on the side. They're also in the back there. And so you're welcome to get your own communion, take it back to your seat. And then right after the song, I'll walk us through that and so you can hold on to it. Uh, but uh, why don't, uh, let me pray and then I'll have you come forward and get that. Lord, we uh, pray that you would just uh, prepare our minds for what we are remembering, what we're focusing on. Lord, in the midst of our hurriedness of, of life, I, I even feel the, the hurriedness of, of this message and, and trying to cover what happened in a year. We're so thankful, God, for all that you've done. 
thank you. And so, Lord, we're going to focus now simply upon the cross. We're going to look back and then look forward. God, we're going to look back to what you and sending your son, looking back to what Jesus did for us on the cross so we would be forgiven of our sins. And we look ahead to one day feasting, having a meal together. And that's what this little meal represents. It's almost like this appetizer pointing to the main course of literally sitting down with you at a table and reclining with you and feasting and having that fellowship with you face to face for our eternity. And so thank you for giving us this remembrance. And today we do this in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name. Welcome to come on up and or back and over to uh, get your communion during this time. Let's what can I give to you? What can I offer to a king for all the love you show? For all your mercy, oh. of salvation My hope is built on nothing less Morning by morning How great is your faithfulness I called your name You heard to take out the bread at this time. Lord, we ask, is it true that if we confess these sins, you are just and able to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness? God, you say it's true that we would just confess our sins before you. Lord, our minds struggle because it seems so simple. It feels even cheap that we do all of these things, we think all these thoughts, and then we just ask for forgiveness. But Lord, I think that's the point. It feels cheap and simple from our standpoint, but not for not from yours. It cost you everything. Your only begotten son and his gruesome death on that tree. We realize and are reminded how serious it is. But it's still true. We confess. We're forgiven. And so, Lord, we pause and ask for your forgiveness for all that we have done said, thought. God, we want to be made clean. Make us white as snow. Let's partake in the bread together. And now we'll take the cup. Lord, is it true 
that you've set the cup aside and are waiting to drink it anew with you and your kingdom. You say it's true. And you're waiting for that day when you bring us home to yourself. And we enjoy this meal with you together. In the meanwhile, we take this cup of thanksgiving and we thank you for all that you've done and are doing in our lives. We say thank you for your great love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you that you didn't leave us on our own to try to figure out ourselves. Thank you that, that our religion isn't tried to do enough good deeds to make up for our bad. Then maybe one day you'll love us. But we thank you for the truth that in fact you loved us before we ever even thought about loving you. You love us so incredibly, we say thank you for helping us, for saving us, for loving us, for giving us wisdom and insight out into the future because of your Holy Spirit residing in us. We say thank you. Thank you for this new year. Let's partake together.